Welcome! Now's a great time to study AP Biology. In this podcast, we'll examine why carbon is considered the backbone of life. To get the most out of this podcast, have some paper and pencil ready to take notes. Review the podcast table of contents. Pause the recording frequently to think about the information being presented. Make a list of concepts throughout the podcast that are still muddy to you after watching the video. Use your text as an additional resource. Talk with classmates or me. Use the podcast table of contents to jump to areas that you want to review. Now, let's get started. Carbon is often considered the backbone of life. Although cells are composed of 70 to 95 percent water, the rest consists mostly of carbon-based compounds. Carbon as an element is unparalleled in its ability to form large, complex, and diverse molecules. All four of the macromolecules that we'll soon study, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, are all composed of carbon compounds. Organic chemistry is the study of compounds that contain carbon. These organic compounds range from small, simple molecules to enormous ones. Most organic compounds contain hydrogen in addition to the carbon atoms. Hydrocarbons are organic molecules consisting of only carbon and hydrogen. Many important biologic molecules, such as fats, have hydrocarbon components to them. They can undergo reactions that release a large amount of energy. This is why, gram for gram, fat contains more calories than any other complex carbon compound. The molecular diversity in biological molecules is a result of carbon's amazing properties. Primarily, its electron configuration is the key to an atom's characteristic. That determines the kinds and numbers of bonds an atom will form with others. So the first important property of carbon is tetravalence. Carbon has four valence electrons, therefore it can form four covalent bonds with a variety of atoms. It's what makes large complex molecules possible. In molecules with single or multiple carbon atoms, each carbon bonded to four other atoms results in a tetrahedral shape. In the diagram at the bottom, you can see methane and ethane both form tetrahedral shapes. However, when two carbon atoms are joined by a double bond, as in the case of ethylene in the third row, you can see that the molecule ends up with a flat shape. However, in all three cases, you can see that carbon is forming four bonds with other atoms. The second important property is the fact that carbon forms covalent bonds. It can form covalent bonds with many different elements, but most frequently it forms bonds with hydrogen having a valence of one, oxygen with a valence of two, and nitrogen with a valence of three. The third important property of carbon is that it can form a variety of skeleton shapes. These carbon chains form the backbone of most organic molecules. These chains can vary in length and shape. In terms of length, the carbon skeletons can vary from very short to very long. Carbon skeletons can branch, as you see here, butane, butane forming a straight structure, while isobutane forms a T-shaped. Carbon backbones can also contain double bonds. The double bonds can vary in the number of double bonds contained in the backbone and also in their position. In this case, we see a double bond in the first position, and here we see a double bond in the second position. Finally, carbon skeletons can form rings. The fourth and final property of carbon is its ability to form isomers. Recall that isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula but have different structures and properties. Three important types of isomers that we'll study in biology include structural isomers. As you can see here, they have different arrangements of their atoms. In pentane, the, arranged, the carbon atoms are in a straight line, while in 2-methylbutane, they're arranged in a T-shape. But both molecules have five carbons. Geometric isomers have the same covalent arrangements, but they differ spatially. In the case of a cis isomer, 
the extra atoms are located on the same side of the carbon backbone, while in trans isomers, the two X's you can see are located on opposite sides. You may have heard of trans fats. Finally, enantiomers are mirror image isomers of each other. We generally for, refer to them as right-handed and left-handed. Mirror images in antimers have important pharmaceutical differences, often in their effectiveness. A left-handed isomer may be an effective drug, while a right-handed isomer may be completely ineffective. Off of these carbon backbones, we pang functional groups. The organic compounds that we're going to study all have unique properties that depend upon the size and shape of the molecule, which is determined by the carbon backbone, and the types of functional groups that are attached to them. So a functional group affects a biological molecule's function in a characteristic way. In our next podcast, we'll examine these functional groups and what type of molecules they're most frequently found on.